Did the U.S. government create a successful spy aircraft? This triangular plane is not real. It doesn't fly beyond Mach 6 or 135,000 feet, and it isn't powered by an incredible pulse wave detonation engine tearing across the sky. That's what the U.S. government says. According to them, this peculiar aircraft is nothing but a fantasy. But going through countless dark websites, I've been able to piece together a theory on what this plane could be, why it exists, and how terrifying the skies above us can be. This is the Aurora Black Triangle, a top-secret aircraft that was supposedly never built. When the SR-71 spy plane program ended in the 90s, the U.S. was left without a new spy plane to operate across the world. Its successor, the SR-72, is still decades away, which means the U.S. military has flown blind for the last 30 years. Or have they? What we know about the Aurora Black Triangle Throughout the years, many have reported seeing a strange triangle aircraft flying above military air bases and across the world. The aircraft seems to defy modern aviation physics because it flies faster than any other kind of aircraft in existence and seemingly vanishes into the clouds. Little is known about this aircraft, but it's estimated to fly at an altitude of 135,000 feet and cruise at an altitude of 90,000 feet for operations. At this altitude, the aircraft would have to fly beyond Mach 6 to be able to tear across the sky. For that to be possible, the aircraft would have to have a ramjet or an early scramjet like the one proposed for the SR-71, or it would have to be powered by a pulse wave detonation engine, which creates a unique propulsion. A pulse wave detonation engine creates small detonations of fuel to push the aircraft forwards, and it's a constant chain reaction that allows the aircraft to reach the required speed. This would create a unique contrail behind the plane, but I'll discuss this later on in the article. The bottom line here is that this strange aircraft is very different from all the other kinds of aircraft available. Regular jet engines and rocket engines operate on deflagration of fuel, which operates on rapid but subsonic combustion of fuel. The pulse wave detonation engine operates on the supersonic detonation of fuel. Because the combustion occurs so quickly, the charge of the fuel and air mix doesn't have enough time to expand. This is why it takes place under almost constant volume. Constant volume combustion provides greater fuel efficiency and a higher maximum speed than open cycle designs such as gas turbines. If this strange aircraft had such an engine, it could fly high enough to avoid current anti-aircraft defenses while offering a greater range than the SR-71 which required a massive tanker support fleet for its operation. The mission of the Aurora Black Triangle would be mostly spying because it would bridge the gap between spy satellites and slower aircraft or drones. Speaking of drones, this aircraft could either be an autonomous aircraft or it could be piloted by one or two pilots. We can't say for certain because there's a lot we don't know about this aircraft and we also ignore how advanced computer technology for spy planes was back in the early 90s which is when the aircraft is believed to have been built. The skin of the aircraft is made of large panels of special titanium material, which reduces the radar profile and helps with heat management, which is important when flying at such a high speed. It could also be able to allow weapon systems to be used in enemy territory. Whilst the missiles wouldn't be hypersonic, the aircraft would still be able to get in and out before the enemy could react. More proof than you would expect. Now, you may be wondering, all this sounds fine and dandy, but is there any proof to back it up? The answer is yes, there's actually more proof than you would expect. By the late 80s, many experts in the US believed that the government had the capability to develop a hypersonic aircraft that could fly at Mach 5. The SR-71 program was already winding down at that point, and it was imperative that the US had a replacement or they wouldn't be able to stay competitive. When the early 90s came, there were multiple sightings reported of an incredibly fast triangle aircraft with an oddly shaped contrail. One of these sightings occurred in 1989 when an engineer stationed at the North Sea saw a triangle aircraft being refueled from a Boeing Stratotanker. The British government investigated this report, but the US government told them that no such aircraft existed. Then in 1991, sonic booms were detected across Southern California and they didn't seem to match any known aircraft, including the SR-71. 
Researchers picked up these sonic booms on special earthquake sensors, and they determined that the aircraft was flying at an altitude of 90,000 feet at a speed of between Mach 4 and Mach 5. A year later, contrails that matched the profile of a pulse wave detonation engine started to appear in the sky all over the U.S., accompanied by strange pulsating roars. During one of these sightings, they detected radio transmissions between an AWACS aircraft and two other unknown aircraft called Dark Star November and Dark Star Mike. Several of these communications mention an aircraft flying above 67,000 feet at an unfathomable speed. Last but not least, we have eyewitness accounts. Chuck Clack, an Area 51 enthusiast, claims to have evidence on videotape of the Aurora taking off. He claims to have spent three days hiding in the mountains above Grim Lake, which is the middle of the desert. One night at 2.30 a.m., he saw the aircraft take off. He said the aircraft was 130 feet long with a sharp triangle shape, which matches all the sightings reported before this one. As for the videotape, he says he locked it away. His conclusion is that it's a legitimate spy plane and he won't show the tape because he doesn't want to give away our national defense. When the government is ready to unveil it, he'll release the tape. Until then, it's kept safe and hidden. By 1996, sighting reports started to slow down, and in 2000, only a few small blips appeared in Scottish radars. So the public started to wonder if any of those sightings actually happened. Counterpoints to consider I don't mean to rain on anyone's parade, but it's important to consider the counterpoints. Let's start with the name, Aurora. It comes from a leaked 1985 budget report where there was an allocation of $455 million for aircraft construction in the fiscal year of 1987. The details were blacked out, but the name Aurora was visible, so people started speculating it was the code name for a spy plane. According to Aviation Week, the budget for the fiscal year 1987 would end up reaching $2.3 billion, and it would result in the production of several Black Ops airplanes. However, it was confirmed by an ex-Lockheed employee that Aurora referred to the development of a special plane for the B-2 Stealth Bomber aircraft program. But just because the name is incorrect, it doesn't mean that the spy plane doesn't exist. The U.S. government has stated that the evidence supporting the existence of the Aurora is circumstantial at best or purely conjecture. Though there's little reason to go against this posture, many people are not convinced. Bill Sweetman, a Black Ops Project expert and writer, has stated that he believes the Aurora is in active development, encouraged by technological advancements which have finally caught up with the ambition that got the program started a generation ago. We have learned from the SR-72 program that hypersonic technology has matured and will be used in future aircraft. They wouldn't know if the technology is ready if they hadn't used it already on an aircraft, wouldn't you agree? Bill Sweetman also stated in 2006 that there was a $9 billion budget black hole that has never been attributed to any Air Force program in existence, including the B-2 Stealth Bomber aircraft program. Perhaps that was meant for the spy plane. But let me know what you think in the comments below. That's all for today. Leave your comments on the essence of the video, leave a like under the video, and subscribe to the channel. See you later.